and welcome to High School Physical Explained. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be talking about what frames of reference are, the two types, how you can tell the difference and why an understanding of frames of reference is an important step in getting to understand Einstein's theory of relativity. So stay tuned. So what's a frame of reference? Well, consider it a bit like your own personal X, Y, Z axis. It's the way you view the world and everything around you is relative to you. So relative to me, this ball is right beside me at a certain distance. So is the steering wheel. And around me, I can see cars moving and I can see trees moving, all relative to me. Now, of course, that's relative to me and not necessarily to the people around me. But that's the point. Motion, its displacement, its velocity and so forth is all determined really by who is observing it. That's what we call it relativity. So as I drive around, everything is stationary. The laws of physics behave the way they should do. Everything around me is moving. So I'm stationary in my frame of reference, but the world around me is moving. But what about someone looking at me from the side of the road. If someone observing me going past, well, they would have a different perspective. They would see me moving and they're stationary as opposed to them being moving and I'm stationary. So we're having different frames of reference here and both are correct. So I've got this ball hanging here and the reason I've got it hanging here is because it allows us to examine the laws of physics in terms of my frame of reference. Currently it's hanging nice and vertically and that's because gravity is pulling it down. Now the fact is, is that I am stationary relative to you. The person on the side of the road would see me moving, so I actually am moving at the same time. Moving, stationary, it really depends on who's observing it. The physics behind the motion of this ball doesn't change. So in reality, I'm actually not sure whether I actually truly am moving. Maybe the universe is rushing past me. Now I'm stationary now, and I always have been stationary relative to me, and the cars outside are moving relative to me. I'm in what we call an inertial frame of reference. The physics in this car is behaving like I expected to. So you can see this ball is hanging vertically as you would expect it to in a gravitational field. But in a moment, I'm going to accelerate as I go around the corner as the lights turn green. And let's see what happens to my ball. Swings back. And swings to the side. In that case, I was in what we call a non-inertial frame of reference. That is, my ball is not behaving. And so as a result, you can tell that I'm moving. So an inertial frame of reference is a case where my frame of reference is moving at a constant velocity or it's stationary. Really what we're saying is there's no net forces being applied to my frame of reference. So I'm not accelerating and that's a critical point. And as a result, the laws of physics behave as I expected to. And this is where the ball comes in. This ball is hanging down and as I would expect it to in terms of a gravitational field. Yes, it's swinging a little bit because of the bumpiness of the road, but it's not behaving counterintuitively. It's behaving as I expected. And you may have this had this yourself. If for example, you were to stand on a train and it's moving at a constant velocity, you could throw the ball up and down with relative ease. It behaves just as if you're stationary. But that's the point. You're stationary relative to you. You're not stationary relative to the person on the platform. And so the laws of physics behave as you would expect them. But what if we added acceleration to our frame of reference? I'm now about to go into a roundabout. So what you notice now is that the ball swung out. 
it did not behave in terms of my gravitational field. There's other forces at play. It's non-inertial, and that's why we call it a non-inertial frame of reference. And only then do I know I'm actually moving because I'm non-inertial. So I'm back now in my inertial frame of reference. Inertial because my car is now going at a constant velocity. But the fact is, I'm actually still stationary relative to me. I'm only moving because the trees around me appear to be moving, but for all intents and purposes, I'm actually still stationary and someone's got a computer screen playing a moving picture. And here's the rub. I can't prove that I'm moving because, in fact, it all depends on who's observing that will determine whether I'm moving. And so, therefore, there's no experiment I can do that proves definitively that I'm moving. And that's the key with relativity, or Galilean or Newtonian relativity. The laws of physics are invariant, certainly in terms of the laws of mechanics. I'm using the concept of inertia and forces and object with mass, and so therefore we say that's classical mechanics. But Einstein took this a step further. He said, look, this idea of relativity, or Newtonian relativity, or Galilean re relativity, where you cannot prove that you're moving because you're an inertial frame of reference, well, that does not only apply to mechanical situations or mechanics situations, it should also apply to electromagnetism. In other words, the concept of light should also behave the concept of relativity. I cannot do an experiment with light to prove I'm moving. The behavior of light shouldn't change if I'm in an inertial frame of reference. The behavior of light should be exactly the same. If I measure the speed of light, let's say right now, inside this car with a torch, then I'm going to get the same value than if I were to be stationary. I shouldn't see any change whatsoever by the mere fact that I'm moving. But that raises a problem. If the speed of light doesn't change in terms of moving, then how do different observers observe the same light? That's the question we're going to have to answer in my next video. One last thing. This ball hasn't behaved like it would like it to. Ideally, I would like it to remain perfectly stationary. Now, I need more inertia for that, so a really heavy bowling ball would work, but I don't think I could suspend it up here. And of course, occasionally, because of my poor changing gears and the bumps in the road, I'm hitting those occasional non-inertial frames of reference, and as a result, my ball starts to move and we start to get periodic motion, or acts like a pendulum, and so I'm gonna to have to stop it occasionally. But this ball has one other tiny systematic error. And I want you to give me a message and tell me what that systematic error is. And you can leave that message either via Facebook or on Twitter. But I give you a clue. This ball has been on YouTube before. Check out Derek Muller's Veritasium and you'll find that the ball has appeared in videos before. And that'll give you the clue. My name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Make sure you like, share and subscribe. Drop a comment down below if it's been helpful and hit that bell to get my latest updates. Take care. Bye for now.